that being said, let's talk about Zen. Now is our time to talk about specifically Shu Zen as our prime example of what do we look for in terms of Zen Yada? What are big things to think about with his kit? What are big things to think about with how you play him and get the most pos value from his positioning, spacing, everything like that? So we'll switch to our blackboard here. I have a few points here. Um, I think it's like a total of five or six points altogether. Well, realistically, I will still be writing like this instead of with text. Um, we're going to try it out still like this. So this is for... Oh, that looks like a really wonky Z. This is for Zen. We're going to try this out. So, point number one is I'm going to break it down. It is shooting is the primary point here, but you have left click. And you have right click. So I'll put a little bit of a space here and I'll put right click here. I believe I should be fine in terms of spacing for points here. But we will see what happens. So with left click, there are some additional points to add with left click and right click here. So the first thing with focusing on left click here is the big thing that you need to know is when do I left click? When is the opportune time to left click? A lot of the time it will be while you're fighting. Now, a lot of you will be like, well, that's pretty obvious. But for people that don't really have an idea of where to start with Zen, the big reason why I'm doing this and saying, well, you start, you want to do it while you're fighting or while your team is fighting is because you want to put out consistent damage, right? Right click is a very inconsistent usage in terms of damage output on a constant basis. So you need that consistent damage coming out. That's why you left click a lot more in fights compared to right click. At the start of the fight, you might start with a right click, but most of the time you will be left clicking because you need that consistent damage. Zen does a lot of damage. Um, hence why you want to use the left click while you're fighting second thing to keep in mind here is how do you get value with left click well left click a big thing that you need to understand is you want to be close while being safe uh now, again, this is a little bit of an obvious point, but the reason I say this is because a lot of Zen players that I notice, and this isn't just normal Zen players that are in rank, this is Zen players that are pros as well, in Tier 2 or even out. I talked to Majid about this, who is now on Florida Mayhem, uh, when, he start, when I started coaching his Zen, and we talked about this a ton. Um, because at first, he would just stay in the same position all the time as Zen. He had some crazy aim, but he wouldn't put himself up for the most success. And the way to kind of think about this is on left click, the way I explained it to him and the way I'll explain it to you is the closer you are to a target, the easier it is to hit someone, yeah? So realistically, you want to try to be closer so you can make have an easier time mechanically hitting the shots that you need to hit. So you want to be close, but remember, Zen is a very squishy target, right? He doesn't have really any protection either. So you need to be as close as you can in order to hit your shots more accurately, but still be in a position where you'll be safe, where you're not exposing yourself fully to a point where you can get surrounded really easily, you can just instantly die because you're right in their face, you're by some sort of terrain, you know, simple things like that. Which moves into right click. So while we talk about right click, when do you want to use it? What's the proper time? Well, again, the proper time of when to use right click is if left click is while you're fighting, most of the time, the best way to use right click is your pre-fight. So before the fight even starts, I just realized I probably shouldn't be using blue on blue for that. I should probably be using another color for those points. For now, we'll keep it kind of how it is. Um, if I feel like it's really confusing, I'll change it up, but I think we'll stick to it for now. Um, but pre-fight, so you want to use it a lot of the time pre-fight. And the reason, again, why pre-fight, again, you have the time to waste. You don't need to have the consistent damage out there. They're very far away. By having that right click, you can hit a burst amount of damage on someone, either potentially getting them very low to a point where you slow down the, ro the rotation, or potentially you could snipe a squishy character, which allows you to completely stop a push altogether, right? So the right click is a much more, 
I would say better tool to utilize at that longer range because of the fact that you have the time, you have a lot of space, left click, hitting a left click from very far away, you're not going to do a lot of consistent damage because it's so far they can dodge it, it's a projectile, right? It's not a hit scan kind of thing. So having the right click, it moves a bit faster than the left click, I'm still fairly certain. And on top of it, it gives you the potential to deal a lot of damage right away and it also gives you the potential to completely shut down fights. Now, something else that I'll add as another layer is I talked about while you're fighting, you want to left click, but that's not always the case, right? And the reason I say that is because in mid fight, sometimes you're moving from a very far distance and you want to move closer, right? This is when I said you want to be as close as possible, but be safe. So sometimes left clicking seems really weird or it's not the best. So when do I look to maybe right click as well? Well, you want to look to right click while you're closing distance as well, right? So closing distance doesn't just mean pre-fight, it could mean mid-fight, it could mean during a fight, right? It could be as you're rotating to a safer position as well. So pretty much like I would say while moving, but realistically I'll put while closing distance. That way you have a clear idea in your mind of when you're kind of doing it. So we kind of identified why, when are we using right click? What's the best time to use right click? Perfect. Now the next part of this comes down to when, when's the time that I want to look to utilize right click in terms of not what's the best time in terms of timing for fights, pre-fight, mid-fight, et cetera, et cetera. But when I'm right clicking, because right click is an animation time, remember, when's the best time to release my right click? When's the best, how should I look to do it? Should I release it in the open? Should I release it um, last second as I'm turning a corner? Like how should I look to do it? And this is a little bit more of a detailed point, but it's still a very good point to kind of keep in mind with the right click. You want to time the right click release just as you're peeking around terrain. So, to explain this a little bit better, uh, time, uh, and we'll show, I'll show you examples because there are some examples in these clips. Wow. So the reason I say this is because you want to make it so that it's very unlikely they'll be able to shoot you uh, and kill you while you're in the open charging this right click looking at them. Even though you're at range, there is still potential that you could die from a hit scan, from an enemy zen, stuff like that. So you want to try to and you, not just die, but it's also the hidden factor as well. If you are in the open all the time, they will know where you are because they see you. But if you're behind a terrain and then you just peek out and you shoot down an area that is very likely that they could be, whether it's an angle or rotation, anything like that, the, it's less likely for them to identify or know where your right click is coming from or how to kind of anticipate it if they don't know where you are. Right? So they, they won't be able to anticipate where the right click is coming from. You could easily snipe somebody really quickly because they don't know that you're even going to shoot the right click. They don't even know where you are. They don't know where to dodge you, right? So this is why this is important. And I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more in detail in a moment. And last but not least, the big thing that I'll kind of say as like a last point in terms of these right clicks is you want to be proactive. And that you, for people that have been here a lot, I use the word proactive, 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 proactive. What does proactive mean here? Proactive, again, remember, proactive means that you're constantly doing something. There's a purpose to why you're doing it. Well, in here, why, why do I want you to be proactive? How do I want you to be proactive? Well, it's super easy how you, I want you to be proactive. I want you to be proactive with your awareness. Proactive with your awareness, you're probably all looking at me and thinking at me like, what do you mean proactive with awareness? Awareness is a completely different thing than proactiveness, right? And, and here I would argue with you differently and say it's almost the same because proactive awareness, pretty much what I'm trying to tell you here is 
I want you to be not just thinking about where you're going to release, for example, a right click. I want you to, as you're charging this right click, look around, observe your surroundings, see what's happening around you. And then when you're about to release your right click, maybe it's five orbs here and you're about to release it. Then towards the last little second or so, or half a second, go around the corner, know where you're going to shoot your right click, shoot it. But for the first few seconds that it takes to charge up that right click, the first three orbs or so, first four orbs or so, look to see what's around you. Look to see where it's safe to rotate. Look to see where someone is potentially going, right? Just have a good awareness of where your teammates are. Have a good awareness where the enemy team is, right? Have a good idea of where you want to position next. You always want to be aware of so much of these things that I listed around you. And one of the best times to do that is when you're charging the right click because you're not doing anything at that time. You can't heal anybody. You can't realistically discord. You can discord somebody, but it's, most of the time you're not going to do that because you're trying to get to a better position, right? Or they're very far away. Um, but you, you can't shoot it right away. You could, but most of the time you're not, right? There's a lot of... Again, things that you're not doing during that time, I want you to be proactive. Use all that time at your disposal in a good manner where you're getting value from that time, right? So that's what I mean by proactive awareness. Uh, proactive awareness. Wow. Charging. I'll put just while charging. Because w this is under the right click category. I don't have to put while charging right click. While you're charging your right click, this is what I expect you to do. So this is the shooting aspect. We have three other aspects to look at. And again, I know, remember, these micro reviews, I like talking to myself. I like hearing my voice. So bear with me. We have just a few more topics to kind of go through. And mainly the key thing we're going to focus on right now is we're going to focus on positioning then spacing then we'll look at his abilities here in a little bit more detail okay so we're gonna do this next and i'm gonna go right to the center area and we're gonna do positioning uh as the next kind of point positioning is a little bit of a smaller point is it because positioning is not important no positioning is actually very important on zen i'll just start it as position uh, i will do positioning i won't cop out Right, so as for positioning, well, what does positioning mean? What are we gonna do? Well, first off, the key thing to keep in mind for positioning is we want to start our max distance away from the dive if we're not gonna go aggressive with a fight or if we're not going to utilize an alt in an aggressive way. So we want to make sure that we're always positioned at max distance or not max distance i guess the best way to do it as an indicator is we want to be max distance from engage and this makes it so that we don't have to waste any of our cooldowns right away this makes it as well so that we don't get instantly bursted maybe again we want to be the max distance away from the engagement so that we don't become irrelevant right at the start of the fight we want to be relevant from the start of the fight to the end of the fight and one of that those big reasons is keeping us safe making sure that we are safe right away when everyone has all their cooldowns up from the enemy we want to start taking over the game when they have lower amount of cooldowns not when they have maximum amount of cooldowns right so we want to start safe and then we want to start to be a little bit more explosive later in the fight. So what does this mean as a positioning as well? Because we're talking about our starting position. We're not really talking about our finished position. Let's talk about what kind of positioning we're looking for in terms of our start, which we just talked about with our distance. But also, what do we look for for potentially good positioning for Zen? Not just at the beginning, but even at the end, maybe in the mid fight. What are key things that we should look for? Well, something to keep in mind is we want to be around terrain or if possible a corner why do we want to be around terrain why do we want to be around a corner maybe because when we're around terrain or we're around a corner that just means that we are able to 
Well, that does not really look like a round. Those don't look like letters. Um, when we're around a corner, we're, we're around terrain, right? It makes it easier for us to kite because we have something that creates distance from us and the enemy, but it also is very good because it allows us to peek out and then be able to reduce our LOS, our hitbox, so that it's harder for the enemy to kill us, not just get to us distance-wise, right? It means that they aren't able, they shouldn't be able to shoot us if we're on the other side, right? So that's why it's very good. It re reduces our hitbox. It allows us to have an easier area to kite around. Um, it keeps us alive is the key thing to keep in mind here. It's like one of our friends. All right, well, one last point for positioning. What is a key thing that you want to talk about? Well, let's talk about anchoring. Um, this is a terminology that I used before in the past. And if you look at my video in terms of backline positioning, how to identify taking space properly, this is something that is talked about a little bit. And I talk about a conga line where, you know, using this as an example, there's three people, you have the off tank, you know, you have the main support, then you have the flex support, and how it goes is the off tank goes and takes space, and then what ends up happening is the main support follows the off tank, and then the flex support follows the main tank, etc., etc. And to explain an anchor a little bit more, aside from that example, an anchor is just someone that you can always go back to to know that you're in a good position. You're in the best position you can. Anchoring is a little bit harder to get value with in solo queue or with characters or players that don't have a strong idea of how to play their character, but it's still a nice thing to kind of look at. So as an anchor, you want to be... Be close. So you want to be around whoever you're anchoring yourself around, specifically as a character. And the characters that you want to anchor off of specifically come from your main support and, again, your off tank, as I kind of sit here. So your primary anchor... And you have a secondary anchor. So your primary anchor is Brig. Your secondary anchor is a diva. It could be Zarya as well, but most of the time, in this example, in this case, most of the time you will have a diva in these kind of compositions when you're playing a Zen. So that's why I'm putting diva here. But Zarya does work too. We'll put a Zarya here as well. Um, we'll put diva slash Zarya. And this is a good way for you to on the fly identify if you're in a good position or if you need to reposition yourself in a better way. That's if you don't feel like you have a good idea of how to position and you feel like you're one of these two characters or roles have a stronger idea of how they should be positioning themselves. Um, they're good people or good indications of identifying how to properly position or who you should properly be positioning around. Now, that being said, we're going to go into spacing next. And what I mean by spacing, it's mainly when we're taking space. Um, how do we do go about this? What are good ways to identify spacing for us or taking proper spacing? Well, first and foremost, um, I'm going to get this point out of the way. Your anchor is a good way of putting about it. If you are lost with if you should take space or not, or what's the best space to take, look at what your anchor, one of your anchors, see where they are in the fight. If they are taking space, then you likely have to take space as well, or you should be taking space as well. Um, again, this is a good indicator to utilize if you feel confident that they have a good idea of taking space, identifying when to take space, identifying when to be, what position is the best position to be in, and you are a little bit more lost. Um, that's when you can follow anchors like that. And most of the time, it will be those characters again. I'm not going to re-put that point there because it's a little bit of a repetitive point. In terms of how to identify when to take space on your own, right? And we'll put in brackets here, solo. Ooh, 
we won't do that. We'll do stars here. These are ways that we can identify when to take space, okay? And there's four points in total here. First point, number one, is this. The fight area is far away. So what do I mean by a fight area? I mean wherever the fight is taking place, if we're in an incredibly long distance away where you can't hit your left click shots as easily, it, it's very hard because they you aren't close enough to be accurate with your shots, well, start closing a little bit of distance. That means that you are too safe. You're in too safe a position. You're not in that middle ground spot where you're safe, but you're aggressive enough to get value. So you want to base it based off of the fight distance. And then again, in brackets, I'll put too far. Okay, well, that's a good indication. Well, what's another way of identifying if I should take space or whatnot? This is a very simple one. You're up, you're up in the fight. Or up people. People slash numbers. If I'm up, if I have an advantage of having six people alive versus the enemy having four people alive, it's likely a good idea for me to take space because I have a positional advantage. I have a man advantage. I can push that to be favorable for me because I have less threats to worry about, right? My team should overwhelm them because we have more numbers compared to the enemy team that has less numbers, right? Another way to kind of do it. Well, your main threat is down. Now, a main threat down, right? I'm not going to put a bracket here in terms of specific characters to look for because it's different for every one. But if we're using divey dive as the example here, and if I deactivate here, we'll see that it's going to be a divey dive scenario for this. Tracer is a main threat. Ball is a main threat. Sombra is a main threat. But who's the biggest threat out of all of them? Probably the Tracer, right? Tracer is a large threat to this Zen. Uh, I would argue potentially Ball is also a large threat threat to this Zen as well. And you need to understand that a threat being down doesn't just mean that they're dead. A threat being down can also mean they have no more cooldowns to allow them to be aggressive. So they're forced to play safe. That means that you're allowed to push forward. So by main threat is down, that means they are either dead or they are low cooldowns. And I'll put that in a little bit of brackets too. So I'm a little bit more clear. Low CDs dead and the last point here to identify spacing how to take space solo what can i do is there closer terrain you can play let's say that you're in an area where there's a lot of terrain to play around you're playing very far back you still think it's pretty dangerous but then all of a sudden you're looking in front of you and you're like well where the fight is kind of far away there's closer terrain here or the fight is like medium range. I can still hit a lot, but there's terrain here where I can reduce my hitbox still. I, I won't take as much damage. I can still kite around my threats pretty well if someone goes on me. Okay, well, if I move forward to this terrain, I get the same benefits as me being further back here. I just get to hit my shots a little bit more easily. They might be able to close the distance a little bit more in an easier manner or a quicker manner, but I still have people to protect me like my brig like my diva so again looking for closer terrain is a good indication that you can play a little bit more aggressive i know this is slanting a little bit so bear with me guys i'm sorry my writing still isn't the best but it's slowly getting there um i'm going to put this by my cam all right two more points now guys we have done positioning we've done spacing the next part that we're going to do is harmony and discord and then we're going to look at the ultimate from zen and then we'll go into some gameplay and look at some gameplay so about a few more moments just going through this kind of theoretical topics or being a little bit more descriptive about stuff and then we'll go through the meat and the juice of this all right harmony and discord 
All right, I don't really need to do that because this is a point. We're gonna do it like this, okay. So, what's the key thing with Harmony and Discord? Well, you might hear people say, uh, you need to put it on a low target Discord, people that are close to you. Um, and I, I'll, I will put down the point of like, Discord who's close to you, because that is a fair point. Oh my god, I got scared. Holy, holy shit. <laughs> it's been too long since I streamed, man. Holy crap. I got absolutely destroyed there. <laughs> Thank you, Kasaurus, for the uh, for the raid, man, of five. Um, I hope you had a good stream. Thanks for the host, man. Go do what you gotta do. I'll take care of your guys. Thank you for, again for the raid. Appreciate it. Everyone in Kasaurus' raid, thanks for coming in. For people that are still here um, from my chat, just give them a nice little greeting. Kind of let them know we're going through Zen right now and talking about Zen and how we can min or better maximize his kit and how to better have a good understanding of how to position well, spacing well, shooting, using your abilities better. So that's kind of just a TLDR of what we're doing. We're just finishing up the last little bit about his abilities and then we're going to go through some gameplay in a moment. So going back to this, sorry. So for example, with Discord, we want to look to kind of hit the person or have it marked on the person that's closest to us or that is the biggest threats uh, for our team slash us uh, harmony is whoever's lower right and I won't write that down because I in my opinion if, is a very common and basic point here but the thing to keep in mind that I'm going to look at is how do you be proactive with this ability and specifically I'll do how can you uh, that is not how you spell eliminate, I'm pretty sure. Should I just run with it? Uh, we'll do this instead. How can you reduce uh, down time? Okay, that doesn't really look like downtime. That really doesn't look like downtime. We will um, erase that and kind of W that. There we go. How do we reduce downtime? Well, there's a few key ways that we can reduce downtime. And this is what I'm going to talk about a little bit more in detail. Because, again, those two points that I brought up about Discord and Harmony, healing your the most needed target in the composition or the lowest target, you know, Discording the closest person that's a threat to you or closest to your team so you can annihilate them faster. Those are more simple points. These are a little bit more complicated points that I find most people don't know is how do you be reduce the downtime with these abilities? How do you make sure that you're being proactive enough with them? Key things to look at here. For people that were here earlier, I talked about when you're right-clicking and charging up the orbs, you should be looking around being proactive with your space. Well, similar thing can happen with Harmony and Discord. As you are moving or rotating, you should be looking to see if you need to change your Harmony or Discord. So that's whether you're taking space, whether you're just putting going in a better position, whether this is pre-fight or mid-fight. It's all about when you're moving, should you be changing your these abilities, who they're on, where they're going on. And it's a very simple yes or no, right? Yes, I should. No, I shouldn't. The next thing that we can kind of think about doing and what what's the next most important juice, what's the next most important thing is I find this seems to be the biggest kicker for everyone. Even though I believe this cancels your reload animation, do it in between your reload animations. Reloading as Zen does not take that long. It takes a few seconds. It, I believe it's one of the shorter reload times in the game. They're not all the same reload time. Some are quicker than others, right? And as Zen Reload, it's, I believe, a solid two seconds. Maybe it's three. But it's a good time to kind of go through this stuff. And realistically, it gives you time. Again, like I was talking about this right click. When you're trying to be proactive with your awareness, look around, look at your threats, look at the best position to rotate. You know, look to see who's in danger on your team. Look to see if there's a better position you can go to. While you're reloading, you should be doing the same thing, looking around and being like, oh, well, 
can does he need a heal orb should i just be discording this guy because we're moving from this target that's dead to now this new target uh that, that seems like a good idea right so you need to maximize this downtime when you're reloading even if it's two seconds two seconds matter two seconds could be a make or break right it's the same thing in between right clicks Remember, I talk about when you're right-clicking, oh, yeah, when I'm right-clicking, I should be looking around, I should be doing stuff. In between right-clicks, when you release, bro, even when you're right-clicking, look to see if you can move your Harmony or Discord orb, orb, blah, blah, orb over to someone else, right? It's such a small timing. Yes, it's maybe when you're charging a right-click or in between the right-click when you release it. And releasing the right click maybe two seconds while you're charging the right click and if you add that now in terms of when you release it that's like a combination of four seconds or so four seconds is a lot of time in overwatch again you got to remember seconds is a lot of time in overwatch right we get to a game where it's super fast paced there's a lot going on so you need to look at it as every second counts every second matters so doing it during this time is very good for you because it allows you to just Again, have less downtime and be able to be very, I don't want to say reliant, but make it a lot easier for your team in terms of the responsibilities you have with healing in Discord because you only have that single ability that can be used on one person, right? Whether it's a teammate or an enemy. So you need to constantly be aware and constantly be moving it around, right? So this is a big thing with this is how do I reduce downtime? How do I be more proactive with it? Those are ways that you reduce the downtime that you are able to be more proactive with that. Last but not least, the last thing, last thing, guys, and then we're going to go into watching gameplay from Shu. Alts. I'm going to be honest. This is the hardest thing in the entire kit. Why is it the hardest thing? Timing is the hardest thing about this ultimate. Main thing to keep in mind with timing it's so hard because either someone instantly blows up or you utilize your ult and then it's like, well, I kind of used it a little early. Maybe I didn't need it at this time. Maybe it's I should have used it later. Well, yeah, you're right, but it's hard to do that. Even the best sends aren't able to get the timing right 100% of the time. So what can you do to make sure that you get the timing the best that you can majority of the time? Well, that's a very simple thing. You need to test the timing around what you want to do. Action being done. Perfect. So we're going to time it around the action being done. What do I mean by that? Whether you're going for a dive, whether you're looking to counter an ultimate, like a grab, like a blade, a Genji blade, right? Nano blade. Whether it's you want to go super aggressive, so you want to use it to save your life. You need to time it around, and as bad as it is, I'm going to put in brackets, you need to test this. You need to go into a game and test out in terms of not just your own reaction time, but the time that it will take for you to be able to put the ability or press the ability in time, right? There is no good time. A good indication that I like to give people if it's for your teammates. If it's for your teammates, half HP. Well, hmm trying to think if it's not if it's just for your teammates i would say for both like individually in yourself half hp is a good indicator to look at use half hp you want to try to be able to react to it with half hp but you need to be able to have the trigger patience to know oh like you could see maybe there are some situations where maybe a tank is half hp but they are going to live because they have abilities that will keep them alive but all your squishies are full HP. You might trank now because like, oh my gosh, I saw someone half HP. But it was still a waste, right? So that's why I said you have to time it based off the action that you're doing. You need to look at what's going on. You need to see what you want to do and get it down to a point where it's, hey, I feel comfortable with this. I can react in time with this. This works. Half HP, again, is a good indication in terms of yourself or with the team, like teammates, um, of when you can utilize that all and get at least a minimalistic amount of value from the ultimate I would say um, it's a good little indicator to kind of go off of 
Um, but yeah, the last thing to kind of talk about with that as well is whoop, your end position. So Trank lasts, if I'm not mistaken, six, seven seconds around that time. Um, I see a lot of Zens mess this up. Um, even in Owl, there's a lot of Zens that end mess up end positioning. I remember pre-Owl, this was a big, big thing that a lot of people were really bad at. Um, end positioning with your trans is you need to identify what you need to prioritize for your positioning. You'll see some Zens, like I will use Shu uh, as an example, Violet 110%, where they'll trank. And then towards the end of their trank, they're just going to run at you. They're they're looking to get more. They're getting more kills. They're doing whatever. They want to frag you. And that's fine. It can work really well. But realistically, you need to know the difference of when you can keep going and when you can't keep going. So you need to understand what position is the best for you based off of what's happening in the fight. So I would say two seconds is when you should look to position for after trank. And then aggro versus defensive. So like you should go aggro if you're up in a fight. You should be more defensive. Use it being behind a terrain or putting a little bit of distance between you and the enemy team. Probably if you're even or down or even in a fight kind of thing. Uh, position, two second position for after. And then aggro you go aggro if you need to make a play or you go aggro because you're up numbers defensive um well let's just say even numbers for now all right. So these are key things, some key subtopics to look at when you should left click, when you should right click, positioning, spacing, harmony and discord orb usage and alts. These are subtopics and a little bit more details of what you should do with those topics. Now, that being said, finally gone through the nitty gritty of explaining some stuff. Now is the time that we get to watch Shu Zen. And again, we're going to look through two clips here. We're going to look at it at normal speed. I'm going to try my best not to pause at all in any of these situations. We're going to look at this just cold turkey, one time speed, and I will point out some things here and there. If I feel like it's really, really worth looking into, I will pause it, rewind it, go from there. Okay. So we see right away as he's walking up. He's left click spamming here, but he's holding his right click. He's playing around some terrain like we talked about earlier. Consistently as he's shooting, obviously, he's changing the discord, which is a good thing to see. But as he's moving around, he's looking to see, again, he's reloading. He's looking to see if he should harmony or discord someone else. And he's just slowly taking space on his own, right? And a lot of that comes down to skew, being able to push up a little bit more. And But you see he's still using the terrain. He doesn't want to just walk into the open. He wants to still be able to reduce his hitbox. But he's constantly being aware of what's around him when he's reloading, when he's charging a right click, right? He's not looking in the same spot every time. Which is, again, a key thing to keep in mind, right? So, so far, we're seeing how he's changing his positioning up how he's identifying how to take space on his own using his anger but also using his own thing you see as he's closing space he's starting to left click as the fight's going down when they're a little bit more at range he will charge a right click here and there but again most of the time as the fight's going down he is left clicking right The one thing that I'm not the biggest fan of, you see how he's stationary in terms of looking at the same place as he's right clicking? That's something that I'm not as big of a fan of. But again, it's not the end of the world. I think it's something that a lot of Zens actually don't do that I think is very valuable to do. He had a great crank in terms of timing wise. He did it right when the EMP was about to drop. And now you see as Skewed is using this rally, he's looking to push a little bit forward. He's taking these duels he knows that he can take when they're up numbers as a team, and he's being fearless as a Zen. He knows the times when to be fearless, he knows the times when he shouldn't be fearless, right? My ultimate is just embrace tranquility. Mm -hmm. 
All right. We see that he's repositioning himself around some terrain. Skewed is still around him. We see he's still looking around to see where people are. He goes down uh, to a dive here. Let's pause there and actually look at that a little bit more in detail in terms of, do I agree with that? Was Shu doing the right thing? Well, let's look, right? Shu is in a position where he wants to be a part of the fight happening over here where his ball and his Ziva are looking to position themselves, right? Tracer and Sombra are setting up a kill box in order to kill the back line there. But what ends up happening is the back line from Hunters is in a different position that's harder to dive and harder to look to execute. So they have Shu and Skewed reposition themselves a little bit further back, try to get a good LOS for when the back line walks out from that area so that they can still commit Discord, they can still commit a little bit of damage on top of their dive, right? So I think this positioning and readjustment is really good from them. The issue comes in that I believe Skewed missed his flail. And the con where they're kiting from, right, is a little bit different. You see a little bit of a disconnect between Shu and Skewed and even Space. Space and Skewed are all towards the left side, right? While Skewed goes towards right, he goes towards that Mega Pack. Now, this is where the issue came in, where if he just kited towards the same side as those guys over there, he might have been able to stay alive, even though he would have been sandwiched between both the front line and the back line from Hunters. So I think overall... His thought process is not bad. He's still trying to get by a health pack. He's trying to use terrain, He's trying to put himself in a good position, but he forgot the one crucial thing when you're a flex support, you need to be by your team. The safest place for you is not the pack. It's not around the terrain. It's by your team and where the resources are. Skewed still had some packs up, I believe. He has two here. Space still has full matrix or close. He pretty much used most of his matrix now, but he had a lot of his matrix alive. They could have kept him alive as he rotated to a safer position here, and he could have even met up with his front lines so they could have dealt with this issue together. So not the best kind of look for Shu right now in the back line from Glads, but overall, the thought process from him, again, he's trying to use terrain. He's backing up so that he's not in that dive range. He's still trying to be relevant to the fight so he can have his discord out. Is not the worst, but again, small minor kind of mistake there costs him to die quite fast and quite easily. So, let's look at this a little bit more in detail now. He's coming back to the fight. His team is still fighting. Let's see how he looks to kind of do this. Chengdu has gone for a soft reset. His team is looking to set up for a forward position. He is close to the transcendence. Let's see if he looks to try to play a little bit more of an aggressive positioning because he is allowed to based off of just having that escape ability online. Again, this is a way you could use a trank, but not the best. Ooh, that is not a good look. Again, they were going for a much faster kind of fight here, right? And as he goes to reposition himself, Chengdu did a great job of doing the same thing, capitalizing on him, but this time with an EMP. The timing is so unfortunate because Shu is so close to Transcendence here, but he wasn't able to get it up in time, obviously, so he just dies to the EMP. Again, Chengdu is doing a great job of forcing the backline to rotate in a position that they didn't want to be in in the first place. So great job from Chengdu to always force that Zen and Brig to position from a forward position at the choke to a more further back position in their main and then capitalize on it multiple times with a dive. One without the EMP, one with the EMP. So even if Shu is playing good terrain and everything like that, the only way to survive this stuff is if you play around your break and if you play around your diva, right? This is just an example of him walking up, right? They're down two. And Shu and Skewed are being very greedy with positioning. That's why they die here, right? There's only two of them alive. They should be backing up and waiting for a full reset from their team. Them dying here and being this far forward is a mistake. And it costs them pretty much a good fight here. Even though Shu has an alt, right? Even though they want to take as much positioning as possible, they should wait for their team so that they don't get completely punished by these flankers. Allow their ball and tracer to do the job of matching or doing similar trade dives onto the hunter's back line. Alright. 
Let's see how he walks. Up. Let's approach this fight a little slower here. Yeah, it's not really much of a fight, actually, to be honest with you. Hunters go for a very aggressive fight here. They know that there's not a lot of time here from Glads, so Glads don't have the best of time to potentially set up something. She gets hacked, so he's not able to utilize the Transcendence right now. It's a good hack from Jinmu. He's forced to hide from the Diva Bomb because the Diva Bomb was landing around this vicinity here. So if he went out, he would have gone down. If he goes this way, he hides from the bomb and then he could re peek out here, re peek out here. Jimmy's just in a really good position by the Mega and they're able to capitalize on him and shoot or skewed very well here. So, towards the beginning, a little bit more stuff to kind of talk about that they did well. Towards the end, not the greatest material, I'll be honest with you. And this is where we'll we'll go through specifically Atlanta stuff a little bit more because I saw a lot of good things from the Atlanta. There were still good things here from Chengdu, but not the best, like I said. He's about to get bursted. He goes for a trank. Again, this is a very staggered touch. Don't really feel like we'll learn too, too much here. At the point's about to just end there. We're going to stop for this specific kind of VOD and we're going to go and switch over to the Atlanta VOD now. So something that I do want to bring up, um, going at our points real quick. And I'll go halfway here. I'll pause and then I'll quickly look at our points again real quick. The thing that was done very well, you're right, that I would say that Shu did well. Left clicking, right clicking, he was doing a good job of min-maxing those in terms of when to use left click, when to use right click. Another good thing to think about is his spacing and his positioning. Again, he's playing by that terrain, he's playing by that corner. He's always trying to set himself distance away from the engagement. Specifically, um, when he's trying to retake space, right? He was playing around terrain and cover majority of the time with his positioning. He was very close to his break. He was always close to his break during initial positioning or even during when he was trying to take space or back up and kite, right? And when he was taking space, he was taking into effect these factors. Is he too far from the fight? Are they up numbers? That's when he would start to look for individual duels. That's when he would try to close a little bit more of the distance on the left when he's left clicking so that he can hit more orbs. He looked to see if the dive had already finished. That's when he looked to, again, close more space. And again, even when it was even numbers, even the, when the fight distance was still relatively close, he utilized terrain that was closer for him to be able to hit more shots, right? He still utilized closer terrain that would still be safe based off of where his anchor is. So he did a great job with that as well. Didn't see a lot with that alt there, but in Harmony and Discord, we saw him constantly looking around, especially with those right clicks. He's looking around, trying to see what's going on, what's the status of the things happening around him and he was consistently looking to change his harmony or discord based off of him moving or him being in between a reload or him being in between a right click right so he was min maxing that quite well so i'm curious to see if he will continue doing that in the atlanta block and again spoiler yes i i saw him doing a decent bit but we'll look at it a little bit more in detail so we skip a little bit here Let's look to see how this kind of goes here. Again, we're going to go to 1-1. One one. I'll pause if I feel like I really need to pause here. But I'm going to try to play this out in real speed. Okay. So we see he's right-clicking. He's looking to hold angles. He changes his harmony right when he's rotating. Changes it again when he's rotating. He's moving back and forth. As he's rotating, he's looking to hold this right-click. Looking for a target, right? Again, I don't like that he's not looking around a lot with his right-click. He's spending too much time while he's charging, just looking at a target he can hit with the right click. I feel like he should look around at his surroundings a little bit more. But overall, they're doing a great job of being very active and proactive with his harmony in Discord. He's doing a fantastic job of utilizing that time properly to, with his right click, specifically looking to see where he should go. He is looking to pop it out right when he's moving away from terrain. Sometimes he'll linger in the open a little too long, but again, he's doing good things that we talked about with the right click. He's doing great things with the Harmony and Discord, consistently moving them around. And his positioning was quite good. He's consistently moving around to positions that is the least away from danger. Uh, it's a little bit harder with Farrah because Farrah can go over top, right? But this is where it's more important that D.Va controls this Farrah a little bit more. 
but positioning looks good in terms of how he wants to take space. He's consistently looking to take space. It's just hard for him to. This is another example, it seems, where he's disconnected from his backline, as you can see, right? He's trying to position in a good spot. But since he's so dis disconnected from specifically his primary and secondary anchor in D.Va and Brig, even though he's trying to take space, and uh, yes, although he's getting tossed around a little bit, he's not in the best of position to get any help, right? So that's why he goes down there. It's not because he was doing the wrong thing, but it was because he wasn't playing around his anchors properly. He wasn't playing positioning or taking space with him. He was taking space more so alone. So this is something that's very unique to Shu compared to other Zen players, is I talked about how break are, is the primary anchor in a lot of these situations, and that you go based off of your break movement, but if you notice, in the previous VOD, and even in this kind of VOD that we're looking at, Shu is dictating moving forward and where he wants to go himself, and break is more so following him. Skewed is following where he wants to go. And I think that can work still very well if your Zen has a great identification of what space he should be playing. So you see here, Skewed is good on break, don't get me wrong, he is playing fantastic positions, but I feel like it's more so Shu is leading the charge here with the positioning and taking space than it is Skewed. So again, a small thing that Shu actually does differently than a lot of Zens. And this is based off of him wanting to get a lot of kills and him wanting to be very aggressive. As he goes to get closer to that D.Va to try to hit more shots, he tranks and orders to survive the D.Va bomb. He backs out, you see, even though they're up a number, he backs up so he could be in a better position around a corner. He almost kills the Mercy, and then once he sees that threats behind him are being dealt with by the D.Va, he starts to walk forward a little bit more. He tries to get a little bit more value. So again, in terms of spacing, in terms of alt there, we saw him utilize it more so for himself instead of a specific target. We still see him not really looking around but we see him trying to move around this harmony and discord quite a bit we see him trying to utilize these positioning and spacing tips that we kind of put into effect as well And what I love to see here is he's moving forward and then he's moving back when he feels he's in danger. Right after the right click, he's not lingering in the open for too long. He's trying to set himself in a position where he's safe and out of the, uh, the LOS of a Pharaoh or anyone else. And again, as he's moving, he's charging up this right click. He's looking in areas that he thinks enemies could come from. Him and Skewed moving around the map very well. They're taking good positions in my opinion so far. And again, as he's moving, you see instead of left clicking or doing nothing here, he is looking around in certain specific targets. He's looking to see what's around him. Even in there, he was looking around to see where targets are or where his team is. Great shot from Pelican there as a side note, but he was doing a great job. He's looking around. He's not doing nothing. He's being proactive with his time is a, again, the big thing with Zen. Proactiveness with your time, doing something while you're rotating, doing something as you're, you know, taking space as you're kiting back, holding the right click, looking around to change your harmony or discord. He's doing a fantastic job with proactiveness in terms of awareness and time usage. And then that's the end of that bot. So realistically, we'll go back and look at this stuff from Zen. And looking at his Zen, looking at left click, he is trying to close the distance, but he's trying to be safe while doing it. He is almost 90% of the time utilizing his left click when the team and himself are fighting. In terms of the right click, it's, again, 90% of the time pre-fight. 10% of the time, maybe even 5% of the time, when he's moving to an area to close the distance and he feels he cannot get good value with the left click. He isn't really doing the peeking around, right? In terms of releasing his right click as he's going around a corner he's not utilizing that tactic that well that's something i would like to see him do better but he is being quite aware about what's around him or what more he could be doing in terms of putting a harmony out looking to see where his team is looking to see where the enemy is while he is charging the right click you're not seeing him always release it right away or you're not seeing him always focus on the kill he'll look around in quite a few of these fights you saw positioning again he's putting himself around terrain he's trying to put himself max distance away from the engagement so he's not able to die right away there was a few times in this situation sorry where he died first to a rocket that's just Farah in a nutshell Farah is very hard to position yourself around especially if when you don't have the diva consistently peeling that Farah away 
right? It's it's a mixture between being relevant and consistently putting yourself in a, a very vulnerable area to being safe and making sure you don't die right away. He did a good mix between the two. And the other thing is he was close to his anchors. He was close to break. He was close to Diva in quite a few of those fights later on in this VOD. At the start, he was a little bit further away from those characters. But once they got their footing, he was able to be closer to his anchors. He was able to get that value. And spacing again, we saw he was fighting. He, when he saw the distance was too far, he tried to move up a little bit. When he was up in numbers, his team was up in numbers, he's moving forward. He's being super aggressive. In terms of the rest... When main threats were down, when that pharaoh was down, he was going a lot more crazy in these fights. When he saw terrain that he could abuse a lot more, he used to take that closer terrain so that he could be closer with his left clicks, right? Harmony in Discord, he is constantly being proactive. He is reducing the downtime that he's not moving those things or not getting value with those things while he's rotating, while he's reloading, while he's right clicking or in between when he releases a right click, right? Or as he's charging a right click. Alts, we're not seeing it in terms of being very proactive in terms of his uses of healing, but we're seeing with his end position, he's putting himself in good aggressive and defensive positions multiple times from both of these VODs. And additionally, he is putting himself in aggressive positions, or he's going for very aggressive plays and then tranking so he can keep himself alive, right? So again, fantastic VOD to look at. He is a great Zen mechanically crazy with his aim as well as understanding in the rest you see based off of these things that i've kind of talked about why he's so strong with this kind of stuff right and again i can't say it enough he's a fantastic zen he i would say no understands his positioning and ability usage very very well especially of when to take space and how to be aggressive and when to be aggressive he does it fantastically well he doesn't rely on an anchor most of the time he's just making sure that his break is close enough to him, his diva is close enough to him, but he likes to dictate his positioning and likes to dictate when to take space on his own. And this is why he's such a good example to look at compared to other Zens, because he's not reliant on his main support. He is reliant on himself and he plays around or off his other partner. That's it for the Zen review. Um, it's usually, actually, this is probably one of my shorter reviews, so. Hopefully you guys liked it. 